that isn't to say that in any way it differs like uh, like you don't have control over those skills and to be honest the screen in which you are inheriting it it is not easy to see if you got the skill you want and I as far as I could see there was no concise way to ensure that you got a specific skill um, you know and it didn't seem random like SMT3 so it is hard to say what skill you actually inherit so but at least it's there at least it's there but outside of that grinding is going to be important for your main characters because that's how you get demons of a certain level you obviously can't have demons too many levels above your actual characters level like in persona uh, one and two so Basically, it comes down to a lot of, uh, of, of fusing. Get ready to fuse, get ready to change, and, and really, you got to pay attention to that stats area in order to do it. Now, one thing that I've noticed while playing this game is you're going to have a very heavy um, encounter rate. Um, and But it's interesting because there are areas where it's very low. You basically know by a blue line or a yellow slash red line at the bottom whether you're going to be attacked in a certain area or not. So it's an interesting concept. It's definitely different than what you would expect. Um, you know, normally when you think of uh, an encounter rate, it's just outside, inside, and that's it. And they really f switch up the formula to where sometimes you'll be walking through a dungeon and you don't have to worry problem though is remember this is first person dungeon crawling when you're in uh when you're in certain areas and man does everything look the same you are going to walk into the same area you just walked into so many times yes the mapper system is better this time around still it's a pain to pull it up so expect to do a lot of of Get, receiving a lot of random encounters, a lot of walking into the same corner, same endless wall. Expect the worst from time to time because you're going to get it quite a bit. Don't get me wrong, there's times where you might just zoom right through a dungeon and get lucky, but man, there are going to be some irritating moments in this game. Not to mention, I, I can't even imagine... For someone who is not ready for puzzles that are irritating, man, you are going to get some puzzles that are going to irritate you like you wouldn't believe. You're going to get hit with status ailments from these puzzles. I mean, you are going to get beat up, especially when you're going, I believe it was the four devas part of the game. Man, you are going to have a hard time. So much backtracking. So much going to the same places. It's not easy. This is not a walk in the park type game. Nor is this going to be elegantly beautiful. Because even though in my opinion the graphics are for their era quite beautiful. You are going to see the same thing over and over and over again. Yes, these demons... They're, they're overall pretty pretty nice looking. I mean, they've done an excellent job in sprite development and, you know, giving you something to look at. I don't think it looks that much worse, sadly, than, than what you see on uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4 when it comes to the, uh, you know, the portraits of the enemies, which, to be fair, is kind of sad. But this is also a home console versus a can't help but you know anyway point being when you see the same sprite though with the same uh attack uh little graphic it starts to get boring and annoying so my advice get demons that are are really prevalent in the area because you'll be able to talk your way out of that fight and seeing that animation and getting the minimal experience that you're probably going to get once you've already passed a certain level anyway. You know, at a certain point, it's much easier to just collect money or get bag. Uh, that's another thing that you're going to have to get ready for. If you haven't played the first one, 
or you haven't played any of the later um, but yet early 90s SMT type games, you're going to be in for a little bit of a surprise. You have to collect Magnetite in order to use the demons. If you don't have that Magnetite, you can expect that you are going to be in a serious case of pain. And what that means is that every time you walk around, if you're lacking that Magnetite, you are going to get hurt. So picture walking around a room, a dungeon, you've beaten the boss, you're out, you're out of Magnetite, and the only way not to get injured at that point is to put all your demons away. Then keep in mind that maybe the only reason why that dungeon had become slightly easier is because you had all your demons out. Well, you can kiss that goodbye because now it's just you and whatever uh, teammate you might, you're hopefully lucky enough to have with you, a uh, human NPC, you know, the human character that you control. Because if you don't have that, you're going to be in trouble. Another thing is, if you don't have somebody with magic, you're also going to be in trouble. Without having magic, it's difficult. It's definitely difficult to beat certain enemies. Um, you know, certain things are a little overpowered in this game, I would say. Fire, fire attacks, electric attacks with their uh, shocking elements, fr uh, ice attacks with the freezing elements. Uh, but either way, it's nothing that's going to really save you that I've noticed. It's still, you're still going to get your ass beat repetitively. You're never going to be like, oh man, I've got this in the bag. Uh, you're going to constantly be getting thrown around. Unless you are a grind master, you're never going to feel like you're ever at a completely safe distance. Especially not when certain monsters have instant kills. I mean, you're just... Uh, I know people rage quit all the time. You are going to walk into battles. You're going to be like, oh, okay, no big deal. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, that's, that's a part of this. You are going to be having moments where you are literally going to be going around thinking that you're safe, you're built up, you're ready for action, you're ready to succeed, and man, are you going to get pissed. You're going to be like, man, I'm seven levels higher than every monster in here. Oh, i am got to restart from seven levels ago because I forgot to save. You're going to run into that a lot. You... You need to find terminals to save. If you don't save, you're in trouble. Uh, don't ever forget to save before you go into a new area because you will probably die, you will probably lose your progress, and you will probably break your computer if that's what you're playing it on. Or if you have a Famicom, you will probably throw that out the window and be like, I'm done with Japanese games. So that's really a quick introspective of this game retrospective introspective review look at uh you know it is fun i recommend this game i literally give this take this game mm, i give it eight and a half out of ten the only reason i don't make it higher than that is because it's aged poorly as far as it's it's uh, sequels have it beat in the I in the concepts being having more range over skill inheritance having leveling demons having uh, you know special fusions you know you lose some of the glimmer when a game is over uh, 20 years old and it hasn't uh, you know gotten an update or port that might have included the idea of demons leveling. I mean, really, an HD remake of this game with the press turn system, which is another huge loss here. There's no press turn system. So when you attack weaknesses, yeah, it's good and beneficial, but boy, without getting that extra turn, it really doesn't give you a leg up. And without the press turn system being implemented and without the ability for the demons to level, you're really missing, you're really missing a part of what SMT has evolved to, well, evolved to in like the 2000s, I should say, the early 2000s, but that's what makes the game special at the same time is you don't get a lot of what 
you know, you don't get a lot of those tactical improvements. And this game really may, brings you back to the day of hardcore RPG. And I really want to win this. And I want to see how this story plays out. Because the concept, when you're finally not in fantasy world with Dungeons and Dragons. This is so cool to be in a post-apocalyptic or post uh, the apocalypse kind of setting that you 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 really miss out uh, you really miss out by not playing this game you miss out on a concept that's so unbelievably different especially for the time period that you're really cheating yourself by not trying this plus even though it's not like all the games completely uh, correlate you know it's so f nice to be able to play something that is similar to Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne and 4 and Apocalypse you just, you feel good, and you get to see the roots of games that are really the best of the Mega Ten franchise. Opinion point there, not a fact, but kind of a fact. Persona's great, not as good as SMT. I mean, look, I get it. You want to do a little more than just, you know, fighting? Persona 3 through 5 are for you. But this game is something special. Give it a try. You're not going to be disappointed. Well, that's a lie. You'll probably be disappointed because you're probably going to die a lot and get pissed and never get to see the actual beauty of the game. Uh, do I recommend playing the first one first? Um, you know, play them at the same time. Uh, I would play the first one first simply for the story. This is one of the few times you actually have a direct sequel where the story kind of lines up. Kind of. And if you don't play it in order, you're going to maybe miss a little bit. But I still would say whether you play the first one or not, this is a gem. Do not uh, not try this. And it's going to be harder for you to go from two to one, mostly because the layout is better in two. Um, you know, unless you're playing the iOS version, in which case, by all, by all means, play it in whatever order you want. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly want to do more SMT content, other RPGs as well, but SMT is going to be a big focus of what I review, what I play, what my team plays, you know, what what we play as a whole, and really the, the involvement. I mean, I want to play some less known games. Uh, we're definitely in, enjoying uh, playing Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, as you've seen... Uh, a girl play um you know we're enjoying playing these games sorry i know we're not we haven't uh we suck at editing so i know sometimes our videos are bland from a visual standpoint and uh, our let's plays are like you know recordings while we play yet that we don't we haven't edited in any kind of i don't know uh voices to it uh one day we'll be smart and figure that out but uh until then you know, maybe somebody wants to give us a little walkthrough on how that works. I'm happy to learn. Uh, anyway, if you want to hear more content like this, I plan on doing a retrospective of the first game uh, fairly soon, as well as Persona 1, uh, Persona EP, uh, Persona IS, both parts of 2. Um, and then I will get around to Persona 3, Persona 4, Persona 5. I just... Uh, I really didn't want to give a retrospective or a review or, or my, my viewpoints on a game that's been done by a million people like Nygerth and uh, Fither and uh, Stain42. I, I, I just feel like I'm, I don't know, go, going and talking about the same thing that everyone else talks about. So I wanted to give you something a little different, especially to the Mega Ten hardcore fans like myself, because that's really what I, what I like. So, but anyway, uh, you know, let me know, rate, comment, subscribe, uh, let me know if this sucks, let me know if it's fantastic, and, uh, I plan to do more. All right, this is Douche, this is Jay with the Douchebag Brigade, and I'm out.